What's going on guys? My name is Bucky Roberts and welcome to your very first chemistry lab tutorial. Now in this video series what I want to do is I want to talk to you guys about some cool equipment and supplies that you guys may be using and also I want to talk to you guys about some awesome chemicals and you know just some cool procedures and skills that you guys may use in your lab but before we get to any awesome labs like making explosives or anything I want to talk to you guys about lab safety and I know that this is going to be incredibly boring probably but it's also probably the most important tutorial so you know before we make anything cool like explosives we want to make sure that we don't blow up or you know get injured or anything like that so the first thing I want to do is kind of talk to you guys about how you would prepare for you know chemical experiments so the first maybe the most important piece of equipment is splash goggles these of course are to protect your eyes and they're a little bit different than safety glasses that you may use I don't know on a construction site or something because these fit tight to your face and they ensure that no chemicals are going to get in your eyes so again they're called splash goggles and uh, again I probably don't need to explain why getting chemicals in your eyes is a bad idea but definitely get some of those another thing that I always wear is gloves now I use rubber latex gloves because they fit tight to your hands and they can you know allow me to handle everything nice and easily so make sure you get a tight fitting glove that's also chemical proof I recommend rubber latex gloves but actually a lot of people are allergic to latex so uh, you might have to get something else but that's what I'm using and the last you know kind of common sense thing is make sure that you wear long sleeves in your chemistry lab and this is just protect against chemicals touching your skin and something a little bit better than long sleeves is actually a long sleeve lab coat. And the reason that this may be a little bit better is because typically whenever people make lab coats, they make them out of chemical resistant material. So, you know, a long sleeve shirt is better than nothing, but it may absorb some of the, some of the chemicals. So I highly recommend a long sleeve lab coat. Now, a few more supplies that I recommend is first of all, a fire extinguisher because I think it's pretty obvious why we're going to need one of these especially if you guys are going to be following my tutorials you definitely want to get a fire extinguisher and two more things are baking soda because baking soda is a base and if we have any acid spills we can use some baking soda to neutralize it clean it up and the opposite of that is vinegar it's nice and cheap and it's also very helpful whenever we spill a base uh, vinegar is acidic so we can use this to you know help neutralize it clean it up so again make sure you go to the store and get some vinegar baking soda and also probably the most important thing a fire extinguisher because hopefully we're going to need this alright so now we know if you spill an acid or a base then you're going to want to use baking soda or vinegar to help neutralize it and clean up your mess however you're going to be working with a lot of chemicals that you really don't know if they're acidic or basic or what they are whatsoever. So before you work with any chemical, you want to check something called the MSDS. And it's basically a sheet that it basically gives you all the hazards of chemicals. So before you, you know start working with the chemicals, start mixing it with random crap, it gives you all the hazards and it better helps you prepare for your lab. Now another thing is that in general, if you have no idea what to do whenever you spill a chemical, these are pretty much the general guidelines. If you ever get a chemical in your eye, you're going to want to flush your eyes with cold water for several minutes. And pretty much the same thing for your skin. If you, you know, accidentally get some chemical on your skin, what you want to do is even if it doesn't start to hurt or, you know, burn immediately, go ahead to the bathroom or to the sink or hopefully you know you have a uh, some kind of cold water running and rinse it under cold water for several minutes so that's basically you know general chemical safety guidelines so now let me go ahead and finish up and give you guys some really common sense tips now for some common sense safety tips first of all never use chipped or cracked glass these test tubes right here and test tubes in general usually chip or crack a lot usually right around the rim so Never use that because they can, of course, cut your fingers. And actually, chips or cracks in glass is one of the main causes for injury in a chemistry lab. Another thing you want to do is you never want to touch hot glass. And, you know, I say this, but in, I kind of sound like I'm talking to a kid whenever I say this. But people touch hot glass all the time. I don't know why. If you even think that the glass might be hot, 
go ahead and use tongs or anything other than your hand to touch it. And another thing, I don't really have anything to point to whenever I'm talking about this, but don't breathe the fumes from any experiment. Unless you know exactly what gases they produce, if you're just, you know, experimenting and you see fumes coming from it, you either want to wear a respirator or a fume hood. Well, you don't want to wear a fume hood. Get a fume hood. But basically, don't breathe the fumes. That's, you know, just something I wanted to say. And the last thing I want to talk about is always have a cell phone nearby. In case, you know, crap gets really out of hand, you want to be able to call someone. So always have a cell phone so you can communicate with the outside world. So anyways, that's basically it. Um, you know, there are... If you ever watch like a lab safety video in school, they're going to tell you to wear like a full body suit whenever you're working with like sugar or anything. But basically, just use common sense and, you know, that's basically it. Just use common sense and don't do anything stupid and you should be fine.